Welcome, everyone. And it's lovely to see such a festive group of councillors and officers in front of us this evening. So welcome to our meeting of the Amenities and Tourism Committee. <clears throat> we have started recording, but we don't have any public no. online or in the room, um, but we do have Sarah Jones online That's right. and able to assist when we get to that in the report. So do we have apologies for absence this time, Craig? We've got apologies from Councillor Hughes and Councillor Peacock, both of which have work commitments this evening. Does anyone have any declarations of interest? Councillor Moxford. Thank you, Chair. I, um, agenda item 12, as Chairman of East Grinstead in Bloom, we will be discussing the um, free hire of rooms, so I won't have anything to do with that. Do you want me to leave the room? Uh, as Chairman of, yes, please. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Moxford. Any other declarations? Okay, so moving on. Um, to approve the minute of the meeting held on 14th of September. Uh, I'm happy to propose those minutes. Could I have a seconder, please? I'm happy to second that, Chair. Thank you. Are we all in favour? we just show hands? That's carried. Thank you. So, item four, Chairman's... I'm sorry. Next. Thank you. So, I uh, item four is chairman's announcements. I'll just start with the water fountain, which is well known to this committee. Uh, but as we will find out, it's not well known to everybody involved. So uh, that's part of the update. So the, the water connection has now been made with South, I think, Southeast Water, which is great news. Um, but the taps will not be fitted until the spring. And in any event, they can't be used until the weather is sort of clement for a water fountain. So it's a real concern at this time of year. And I think East Rinse Society will be leading on an opening event. So the town clerk has also written to Mid-Sussex District Council regarding the handing over without reply to date. And I actually followed up with, um, I had a meeting today with Mr. Toogood, uh, plus Catherine Hall, Chief Executive, and Simon Hughes, who's sort of on the management team. Uh, Kevin, Mr. Toogood re re uh, confirmed receipt of the email, but was unfamiliar with a lot of the background of the project, which I said was very disappointing. And uh, Catherine Hall and Simon Hughes both agreed to pick up with him so that he would be able to reply and that we don't have to reinvent the wheel on this one. And I reminded them of what previous promises were made were with Mid Sussex offices. So I'm hopeful of a reply Thank soon. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> um, so I think we all agree that the town council can't move forward until we get a proper response from Mid Sussex regarding their, their, their assignment mm. and uh, any financial obligations associated mm. with that. Um, Alice is uh, obtaining a quote, thank you Alice, mm -hmm. for the cost of the plaque and inclusion of Panton on Town Tourism map and we hope that this will all be in place for the spring launch. Um, and there's nothing else from the other minutes. So. Is that okay by way of update? Would we be happy just to take that board? Has anyone got any particular questions that aren't elsewhere on the agenda? So thank you very much. So item five, uh, tourism report, which is enclosed for our consideration. I think uh, as we go through reports, I think it becomes obvious how much work has gone in over the last few months. Since the last meeting, we talked about the, you know, the Christmas lights and all that work and similarly with the remembrance service and there's just a lot of work that has gone. Alice, do you want to refer to anything in particular? I mean, I would say I, I wasn't at the remembrance service, but I think the poppy panels have been really well, really well received. Um, the Christmas display 
has been fantastic. And mm, just pick up on them. Yeah. The, the, yeah. The, uh, the, the, the War Memorial is actually under the estates and um, civic management. Oh, I'm sorry, I've got it on there. I've oh, sorry, I've just turned over to it. Sorry. Sorry. Um, and um, and, and yes, yeah. the yes, the, uh, the, the the Christmas lights which I did come on. Sorry, I turned over the page too quickly, and it's just sort of, yeah. Sorry for that, but yes, but I know I, but, but particular reason is obviously Alice was instrumental with our Christmas display and the lights and all the work there. Councillor yeah. Farron, just a couple of questions. Thank you, Alex. Good report as ever. Um, have you have your IT issues resolved in the library? We have. Yes, yes. that's good to know. Um, Excellent. Um, and the wayfinding, I know we've been after this, this sort of uh, <clears throat> information from you, which you very kindly uh, provided, provided us with now. What is the time frame for all of this? Um, what, what was the, the date that this was these, collected, this information? These statistics are since the, the flats were installed. Yeah. So that was before my time. Um, so, yeah, they're very low if you look at it. Yeah, the that's, what I was, that's yeah. what I'm trying to uh, yeah, allude to. Yeah, okay. Okay, thank you very much. That was my question. Thank you. Cats and points. Just on the wayfinder. So um, and this shows my complete ignorance <laughs> that I'm assuming they're where Sackle College is, they're on the main, and there's just a QR code. Like, it, there's, a, there's a route from the train station up all the way up. Yeah, all up up uh, railway approach London Road and the High Street to um, Sackville and to the statue. And do you think um, the QR codes are prominent or what? Yeah, that does seem quite. I have a little example. Those are the plaques with the QR codes, and then there's also the kind of yeah. person size or bigger one finding prints as well. Um, so either people aren't aren't physically seeing them, or they just not used to QR codes. Um, yeah, that's yeah. quite an interesting one. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's the 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 more, more prominent advertising a little bit more and we're going to move the digital map that is on Visit East Grinstead which we're now managing to a more prominent section on the page as well um, so that is getting um, some more clicks in there as well um, because there's a lot of information people are interested and some people are but volume wise it's not it's not coming through at the moment I think QR codes are definitely They've been around a long time, but certainly the last couple of years, I think they've become more apparent. People become more familiar, so yeah. I would sort of expect, given they're quite prominent on that. Bizarrely, I've looked at some of these facts and bizarrely haven't picked up on it myself, so that sort of shows my own ignorance. But um, yeah, I would expect these numbers to go up just naturally as people become more familiar with your goods. Thank you, and I think we're all reminded that there is uh, branded merchandise available to help hit sales targets for the year for us all so um you still got stocks available is that right yeah we've got um we've replenished our stocks of um the lovely east Grinstead mugs and um, we've got a new postcard um we've got two towels we've got new bags um yeah we have a selection at the library the museum and upstairs here as well Chair, if I could just add a little bit on that, the team are actually on course to hit their increased sales target for this year, which I'm really, really pleased about because it's something that uh, has long been, um, I, I think, under um, underachieved potential with, with, with our team. And it, obviously, Alice is still quite new to the team. And it's really, really pleasing to see that, uh, um, that the, this year they've already hit two thirds of their target. And I think they're going to get there by the end of the year. So if anybody does need um, any uh, Christmas goodies to send around the world, then we've got fabulous. That, that is, I love they have around the world. Yeah. We've got a fridge and a tea cards have gone to New Zealand, to Canada. To, yesterday, someone bought a mug that they're sending somewhere else to Japan. <laughs> Feels like there could be some competition around that, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Or some sort of extra. <laughs> <laughs> How far can they go? Yeah. Can I you? No. Yes. Um, sorry, uh, that's worth promoting what yeah. you just said. Well, really we, interesting. Got, we find a bit of a new stock in, we're going to do an, yeah, yeah. Uh, an online yeah, good. post. Yeah, cool. Good. You can add America because I've taken them over there. <laughs> 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 Cats of ponds. Uh, just on that, it just I couldn't, and I've only quickly looked. I can't see it on the East Grinstead Gov website. So, is it? Can I get to find a way of phoning up the library or ordering purchase? Yeah, we were looking at an online shop of sorts, and um, I can't remember the technical issue we got stuck on, but there was an issue where we got stuck with actually having an online sale shop as such. We do have a, a card machine that we can take payments mm. in, in the library. 
Um, so yeah, I'll, I will look at that. Yeah. yeah. Or even if, if we don't want to go down the shop, even just a phone number, a page showing what there is, and yeah. a phone number to contact and say things you don't know. That would phone. be an easier option. Yeah. Uh, and then to the point you just made, this sort of talk about, you know, it's, they've gone as far as X. Just again, I just think it would be really good. Okay. Hmm. And maybe linking into the Visit East Prince website or something. Yeah, there's a page on there that they can reactivate. Great, thank you. Thank you. Are we happy to note this report, everybody? No, please. Noted. Noted. Thank you. And thank you very much, Alice, for, for those items and all the above and beyond that you also do. Um, item six, Estates and Community Services report. Um, I, think I got a bit carried away earlier with the um, <laughs> already highlighting some of the some of the improvements, which also enhance the town more generally, as as we know. So, um, <clears throat> thank you very much for those, uh, Alison. Um, I know we've got later. We've got some um, we've got some Barnabas on the agenda anyway. Um, I think have you got an update on the playground equipment that you're able to share with us? Yes, we. But it's been very slow, so I, I don't know if everyone's aware, but we spent a lot of money on the new piece of kit in the playground, and then had an arson attack. Yeah. So after spending about four years trying to raise the money for it, it was only in about four weeks. Yeah. However, the insurance company have since given us <coughs> approval to go ahead with the repairs, which are in excess of twenty thousand pounds worth of damage they've managed to cause. Um, we haven't had any replies yet from the actual contractors but they but we are hopefully going to move forward in the new year that's because oh, that's a horrible very sad it is has anyone got a oh, thank you chair and um, can i just ask this is a really silly question but it came up um, last time at amc and i should know better having shared this committee um the trolleys, the supermarket trolleys that we find everywhere. Do we get anything back from the supermarket to take the back? Do they want that metal? Do they, do no. Know? So currently, part of them we have to mix up the yes, partnership agreement, and they're returning trolleys. It's part, part of, of the it. yeah. Mid Sussex partnership right. agreement. Where we move forward when we're not on that, I I don't know. But at the moment, this is we don't do that for. The actual supermarket we do it as part of the mid Sussex so, so yes. So when that goes <coughs> next year, we we'll have to revisit that. But, but there is, uh, but, but actually during the summer when we're very busy and we can't actually do it ourselves, there is a, a generic telephone number yeah. that I can call to report, and and that actually gets the shops themselves to go and find them. So, but yes, during especially during the sort of you know now we're into the winter months. Thank you. I was just going to say, a member of the tag team, Andrew Morris, who's got a van, regularly picks up trolleys and takes them back to where they live. Because it annoys him, so he does it. The same mornings go to the same yeah. areas of his people, let's yeah. say. Okay. Yes, please. Um, so just, just thinking about these things, you know, all the vandalism damage seems to be a, a, a theme that's um, gone along at public services and here tonight um, in the report. The vandalism um, we'll talk about in the smoke detectors and things in the King Street toilets. Are there any cages and things you could put on them that can stop them doing all this damage? Because it's a perpetual repair and replace, isn't it? Um, the no, I mean, forward. the lights have all got caged. Yeah. Everything on the ceiling caged. I mean, to be fair, the actual toilets were designed by um, Mid Sussex District Council and they had as much, you know, the doors are. Yeah. Um, um, metal doors, and when we did our toilets, I wanted to upgrade ours in East Court, and then I got the bill and went, Ooh, you know. um, No, okay. other than, than what, closing them, but you know, <laughs> okay. they're, they're greatly appreciated and, and loved by lots of people, but not everyone. And looked after by the majority, let's be fair. Who they are. The majority do look after them. Thank you. Thank you. And Alison, do you also have an update on the Christmas lights? So. Um, I, I can do oh. an update yeah, on Christmas yeah, lights. Yeah. Um, we are still experiencing problems with the railway approach um, and two of the motifs on the high street as well. And they have moved a couple of our motifs um, as we were unable to resolve the issues with the um, uh, with the, the lighting columns, which is, which is where the problems come from. 
Um, we have not as yet had a day where all of our lights have been operational. It's been very disappointing. Uh, to this end, the contractor has been asked for a full report of dates of uh, faults being reported when they were rectified, as this will now be a matter of discussion regarding the bill, which we settle after the um, end of the, uh, the lighting period. Uh, we will be seeking a reduction in cost because railway approach, with exception of um, two of the lights, has been off the entire time, and those two have only come on this week. Um, to be very fair to our contractor, he has been in town and he's managed to get them working and then within a day they're out again. So something's not right. We don't know what the problem is. And uh, obviously we are looking to try to uh, get more information, remedy it. Um, Alison, um, Jasmine and, and now Ellie are constantly having to run around and look to find out about lights that are out and the staff who drive through the town um, regularly um, obviously and Alice's team as well um, let us know about the, the numbers of the, the motifs on the, the, the lampposts that are out so again a request to committee members please if you see a light out make a note of the number of the lighting column or where it is, let us know so that we can pass that on to um, the contractor. Mm -hmm. And if possible, snap a picture, but please don't do that if you're driving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it helps. Anything you want to add to that, Alison? We are positive that the lights are fabulous. Mm -hmm. We've had mm -hmm. some of the nicest, um, you know, comments that we've had. Yeah. There has been no, I normally have, oh, but we really like the snowman. I don't even know what the snowman was. <laughs> 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 but, but I've had none of that this year. There have been just positive, positive, positive. So I think it's everybody a well done to the, to be very, the Christmas yeah. light subcommittee that worked on that. Yeah. Big well done to them. Yeah, well done to them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, catch the punch. I just want to yeah, congratulate. I think the Christmas lights are new to this committee, new to the council. You know, it's been one of the things I think the town has been known for that we always put on a good display. I know times are tough, but actually a bit of Christmas joy, I think, does a lot to lift the, lift the spirits. And as a town, the businesses are struggling. I think anything that can do to make the town more inviting, I think, you know, I wholeheartedly to support that. And I think when you see the news articles, various towns have shown, um, if you say, less uh, ability to put on Christmas displays, I think we should all be proud and I think definitely these lights are uh, amazing, so well done everybody involved. Yeah, thank you, I'd like to echo that, and I think when you read the report you can see how much work is actually involved in so many different areas um, of the town and at our estate, um, which we're very lucky to have, but it is high maintenance isn't it so um, thank you very much everyone involved uh, we do have uh, one recommendation in the report uh, to increase uh, the hanging baskets for the winter traders just from 45 to 46 pounds are we happy to um happy to propose that Council I'd, I'd like to second that chair thank you are we happy just yes. to agree that thank you. you so that's agreed otherwise i think the report's for noting um so with all those I comments previously I uh, said so put some other items item nine later. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, yes, yeah, so, so oh, so it's, it's yeah, yeah, so it's gonna come back up in item nine. So if that's all right, we'll pick up on some bonus there. Uh, can I ask a silly question? Annual license tree potting. What is tree potting? Apart from on a map, the where they are. Is that what it is? And every year we have to, sorry, I shouldn't ask this is serious. We have to spend two thousand three hundred and eighty seven moving back to go back round and confirm where the trees are. Is that, sorry, I'm not, not just quite. Like, <laughs> not, I'm just, it just stood out as quite a large sum and I just wanted to understand. Well, that. yes, we're paying that amount of money, but not quite to check that the trees are still where we left them, no. <laughs> They're not M7. <laughs> tree, tree, trees are um, inspected on a four year pattern, depend, right. depending on what the type of tree is, whether the tree is one that's under any type of concern, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is um, a very expensive piece of software, which we purchased three years ago, four years ago, maybe. Um, we had to do an awful lot of work to input all of our information. We had to have all our trees surveyed. All of that was done. It's a very expensive piece of work. The reason it's done is that um, as the owner of these trees, if we are not able to prove our maintenance schedule and our um, surveying and our looking after our trees and something goes wrong, a branch comes off and hits somebody on the head, we could find that we are into a multi-million pound lawsuit. 
and this allows us to um, protect ourselves and protect the council with regards to um, any claims that may come against us. So that's why it's done. It's not cheap, but it's a very, very good piece of software. Looked after by Claire, who reports to Alison. It followed a court case, a court case. Which, to, a, to a parish council. To a parish council. Dish versus, I wish I There's a W, w it was a W, and but I can't remember yes, where. And they, the town were adamant that they had done what they should have been done, but mm. the court the recommendations from it were saying that it wasn't anywhere near good enough and that they were found liable for it and then came back and it came back with you know new recommendations which is why we took that and improved what we were doing but it's only across i'm just trying to understand so exactly it's right. the license for the software yes. so that we can maintain that one yeah. and roughly how many trees are there in <laughs> roughly approximate 200 keep going 3,000 but it, okay. it gives every tree its individual number it does um, history of its condition. Um, yeah. It captures the survey every time. Is it up, 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 up a track up. or in the... That was another one, but right. that was even more was, expensive. Okay. So, right. yes, yeah, yeah, yes, exactly. We looked at that first. Okay. And, but you need to own 10,000 trees to make yeah, that really okay. good. But that's right. a phenomenal. That's yeah, yeah. really good. But we must have spoken to a lot of the, the software companies. Um, and without it, it was just very hard to actually make sure that every tree, that tree sort of that looks a bit like the one behind the silver birch that I don't know the name of, didn't really work as a, you know, I can name some trees. Mid Sussex and, um, well, the boroughs and the, and the counties and, and the districts will also have something similar in place. Yes. Although the county council have taken the view of, um, they do some management, obviously we, we were very aware of that and they have to do the ash dieback and we see that they can't get out of doing that. But um, because they have so many trees, I mean, they're talking tens of thousands, if not a hundred thousand trees where Sussex mm -hmm. has to look after, actually for them, the risk is greater for them not to actually have to go through with both, but it's different for us. It's, it, it's very much a, we spend the money and we have to do it. They, they, they also do, they, they don't get me wrong. They're not a county, just don't not bother. They certainly do. Um, but they just do it in a different way to us. And you'll find that actually they don't have the detail that we have mm. because we have the ability to do that because the, the lesser number of trees, but it is all about insurance. Thank you. And, and, yeah, and also over time, it will make it much easier for maintenance, won't it? Because we'll know what sort of heights they're yes. going to and things like that. And every tree will have its own history. Alice? Oh, I think you had your hand up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, so, report for noting everybody? Uh, with the recommendation already taken. Thank you very much. So thank you. Item seven, burial services. So uh, we've got the cemetery report <laughs> attached and closed for informal consideration. And Sarah is online. Um, welcome, Sarah. Hello. Uh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Sarah, I know you'd like to add a new bench at Mount Noddy if there are sufficient funds in this year's budget. But to, is there anything you'd like to talk about the report? Um, no, um, everything else is in there. The, I do appreciate that the bench is a nice to have rather than a need to have. Um, but with the work that we have done um, with the Commonwealth War Graves Commission um, and the installation of the new grave marker, we just felt that um, there are such beautiful benches and that one in particular um, would be um, quite fitting, I, I believe, to have up near where the um, Commonwealth War Graves are in Mount Noddy. So it's a decision to be made nearer end of the financial year if we have finances available um to come back and ask um whether that's something that the council would approve um but it is something that i feel would be quite fitting for that area thank you i mean the graves to the good and the fed is good um it's a decision that we allow if the budget if, if budget if the budget permits um are we happy to approve that recommendation i'm happy to propose it 
Um, could I I'm happy second? to second that if the end of financial year warrants it, absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, approve that as a committee. Yes. Okay. Agreed. That's carried. Thank you. Um, and I know you've done a lot of work, um, Sarah and team, uh, sort of, you know, obviously with the, um, the wobble testing and making the graves safe, etc. And I, I don't know about everyone else, but you do still read in the press some of the other councils that have got themselves in challenges with the way that they've handled some of the, some of these issues. And so uh, I'd like to thank Sarah and the team for handling them so sensitively and appropriately. It's been very much appreciated. Um, <clears throat> Sarah, is there anything you want to add regarding Queen's Road Cemetery? Um, not at this time. Um, I believe um, the next stage will be looking at the installation of um, the next level of badger fencing to secure off that um, area that's going to be designated um, following the um, advice of Natural Health, um, Natural Heritage England, sorry. Um, so that would be the next stage, but that will um, require further consultation with the Badger Ecologist Society just to confirm that they are happy for us to go ahead and remove the remaining fencing, the electric fencing that's there. Are there any other approvals that are required from this committee in respect of... I don't think so, not, not, not tonight. Now that um, Miss Jones has just um, clarified that we're not ready to move forward just yet with the, yeah. with the other items she had on the agenda, then um, that's absolutely fine. Right. So we'll just come back to this committee as, mm -hmm. as required in future meetings. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sarah. Um, really appreciate the report. I'll be happy to know. Oh, Councillor Pond, sorry. Sorry, I just waited for a while. Um, we're just to say, we've got the D-Day celebrations next year, and given if there is money in budget there for the bench, I'm just wondering whether that can be sort of wrapped up in, you know, we've got the Commonwealth um, gravestone um, in, we've got the bench, I just think it would be a kind of nice unveiling of as part of that D-Day, potentially something we could think about. Yes, uh, that's definitely something that had crossed my mind. Um, I um, would like to do that then. Um, I think it just, I, I'm kind of reluctant to pin our colours to the mast just yet, just in case. Um, uh, obviously, budget means that it has to be placed where it needs to be rather than where we would like it to be. But um, yes, very much so. Thank you. And then just on the burial data, is the, the value in brackets um, what it was last last year, same month last year, or was it on the previous month? I'm just trying to... Oh, so, sorry. Yes. Are you with, uh, is this with regards to the burial data? Um, uh, yes, yeah. indeed. So certain burials were zero in September, for example, brackets three. So um, is it pre-September 22? Is that what it's... Uh, no, so that will be the previous three months. So that would be the last... Um, uh, the uh, uh, what will it be? Um, is it June, July? Yeah, June, July, and August. So, in um, June we had um three earthen burials, and in September we've had um zero. Oh, so it's three months back. Okay, so three yes. months prior. Okay, fine. I think I get that. Uh, and then lastly, sorry, share um, <laughs> just on the the Queen's Road Cemetery. Is that, I'm just unsure whether that's already been approved, that budget is spent to put those... That is something, so, yep, yeah, that's a good uh, question. It's something that I um, need to liaise with um, uh, Harry with regards to, um, it's something that I know he obtained um, or initiated when he was... Um, uh, liaising in relation to this fencing so um, I was under the impression that this had already been um, bought as a potential for happening um, obviously now with the handover process I'm looking to carry that forward I just need to confirm whether those um, initial proposed quotes um, uh, are um, still viable and um, whether they're appropriate to go ahead with so it was more for information around this is the kind of figures that we've been um that have been indicated with regards to moving it forward for the next stage yeah so i think this is what we're just double checking this isn't for approving for now but it's likely to, this is if viable is going to come forward to the to a future meeting so and the reason i agree this isn't about the, re, the way i read it is around the pathway not the badges or uh, I, I, 
Is this is this fencing for the path? No. Or fencing to keep the badgers in the corner of the cemetery? I couldn't quite. Apologies, Councillor, if I didn't make that clear, I am sorry. Um, so this is separate to the pathway. So the pathway um, has been completed as far as it's going to be at this stage. Um, this will be in relation to the um, fenced off area that will temporarily, um, uh, following natural heritage guidelines, be um, sort of allocated for um, any remaining um, badges um, until they finally move on. Right. All indications, all indications are so far that um, they have largely moved on. We just need to confirm that. Obviously, we're working very closely with. Um, partners at Natural Heritage England and the Badger Ecologists to ensure that um, we do everything properly. Thank you, that was great. Thank you. Thank you. And I think we've now noted the report. So thank you, thank you very much. So agenda item eight, uh, the uh, update on events regarding uh, 80th DJ80 commemorations on the 6th of June 2024. Uh, so we've got quite a comprehensive report in front of us. Sorry, we've also obviously got an update on the big reveal, etc. But a particular focus on the D-Day 80 on the Sunday before, which starts with the first of the East Court live events. And then uh, we've got a programme for the day itself on the Thursday the 6th. We've got a recommendation at the end that uh, we're asked to approve that programme and to confirm an increase in the summer events budget. Um, has anyone got any questions in respect to the D-Day 80 to start with? Councillor Farrell. I was going to say, it, it, you know, looking at this, and um, for those that haven't done it before, not seen before, um, the beacon, to turn it into a guest fitting, I think is genius, absolute yeah. genius. So um, wholeheartedly approve for that to go. We're not there yet. Possibly, but oh. we are hopeful. We are but hopeful. I'm, I'm so and we think it's the right answer. So yeah. um, so I hope it is, it does manifest itself. Um, so well done for that. Come on, let's 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 make that happen. And hopefully it happen. It means the fire engine, the fire service can be there to celebrate <laughs> rather than to put it out at the end. Um, <laughs> so that would be a benefit. So um, I really hope that comes to fruition now. You put a damn squib on that. <laughs> Talk to you about it next year. <laughs> now this is the tank of upside here, and it is a phenomenal brilliant idea. Yes, there you go. <laughs> but but Alison's got, got to make it happen. <laughs> I've had, I've had support from, men, from other members of staff who just keep giving the job back to me because we're finding it much well, harder. Well, the solution harder to achieve. Yes. It, I'm okay. sure there is, but there's no guarantee. That's okay. 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 We'll get there. Yeah. We will well, if it doesn't happen, happen, we save some money. But, you know, but we're not, we, we certainly haven't given up. But no, it's I'm okay, not, you've got six months. Six months. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> no, no pressure. pressure. Yeah. No, okay. no pressure. So, fine, I, I was asked to light the beacon at the Platinum Jubilee celebrations in Ashes Woods, and I had to shin up a ladder with a, <laughs> with one of these sorts of oven <laughs> cooker lighters to try and get the gas. That's look for the gas. gas. Yeah, it was it gas. Was and, um, and then there was a sort of, and I didn't know quite exactly what time to shin up the ladder and put my head above the parapet and all these people are taking photos and and, my, and I didn't know what was going to happen and I was trying to, anyway, and it ended up, um, my face is like screwed up in absolute horror and sort of fear as to what, uh, at, people are taking photos of it lighting and all they can see is my face looking like it's absolutely horrendous. So it's worth a bit of practice, I think, as I well. I have to say, Cheryl, I'd like my solution to be better than that. <laughs> we, 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 we've never asked a town mayor to do that. And the deputy town mayor who sat around the table and therefore assumed he will be town mayor come next June when this has to be done. Um, I, we will, whatever the solution is, it will not be that. <laughs> I've got um, reminiscences of, of, of a camping uh, stove. It's exactly, it was I've exactly got, like that. I'd like to forget. And 30 <laughs> seconds before I went up there, I picked it and it didn't work. 
Okay, so um, uh, can we approve the D Day commemoration? Are you going to recommend? Yes, we are asked to approve that um, the, the, the program has set out is uh, commemorating East Winstead and an appropriate increase in the summer events budget to. At the, when we go to the budget setting to, to allow that to take place, is that happy to second that, Chair? I'm happy to propose. Thank you, Councillor Farron. Is that agreed, everybody? Thank yes, you. Thank you, Chair. Um, so that's the sort of that recommendation. Um, I think it'd be remiss for us not to comment on the big reveal and the amount of work uh, that went on there mm -hmm. as well. Um, previously alluded to in the meeting, but thank you to everybody from the council staff and our community volunteers. <clears throat> uh, yeah, it's very difficult, to, as we know, to find volunteers to, to manage that. So thank you to everybody that was involved. Um, the reveal is organised by the town traders and we organise, as town council, we organise the light switch on and street entertainers and the road closures, etc. So it's a good partnership, um, but we ensure the event and assist on the night and we organise the voting slips as well. So um, I think we need to thank uh, the Martels for supporting the Christmas lights as well, which we use through their electricity. Um, I don't know if anyone's got any particular comments or town clerk, if you wanted to add anything. Um, yeah, present. just to say the first suggestion that um, we approach churches together next year to ask if they could put forward some volunteers, which we will. That's okay. a good suggestion. Happy to do that. Um, we have obviously in the past contacted Lions and Rotary and not been able to get there. They're, they're busy and it follows on immediately after Remembrance. It's a busy time of year and we do understand that uh, getting um, volunteers is difficult, but we'll, we're happy to try any and every avenue to get people to volunteer, which uh, uh, Alice and I have had a conversation about already and we will, we will do what we can. Um, and yes, I thank you very much for mentioning Martels. They, they, they actually provide the power and they don't charge us back for two of the overheads that uh, across the, the the London road um, they pay for those two bits that their electricity they let us plug in and they pay for that so we're very grateful yeah. to them for that and I don't think we've ever really mentioned that before which we really should have done mm. because uh, we're, we're, we're very grateful everything else is paid for by us um, everything else is on a meter on a, a new feeder pole whatever it might be we pay for those electricity costs but those those two um, crossovers are paid for by Martins. Anything else you want to add, Alison? No. Just thinking about, about lights, particularly. No? Alice, anything else on the big reveal? No. no. That's it then, Chair. I think that's a point I'd like to <laughs> make. Sorry, I was there. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> but, uh, just a great event. I think everybody I spoke to really enjoyed it. I think it's, it went thoroughly well. Um, I think. Uh, Again, and something which the town can be proud of. I think it's events like this that really sort of separate us from some of the other towns. And I think everybody who talks about it always wants to, to come back again. Um, in terms of, um, I think there was a couple of things, one of which is turning on the lights from each lamppost. And I know maybe something we want to think about. I know budget may be tight for next year, but thinking after, I think there was, we need to have individuals to turn on. No, is it changed? Yeah. Sorry, come on. Do you, think, do you want to finish first? Or no, no. That? Okay. okay, carry on. Um, we, um, this year, we said we wanted an instantaneous um, light switch on because we can't, um, we're going to take you back a couple of years. Um, we, there was a change in the, the safety um, rules um, about people not being allowed to switch the lights on the lamppost because that's what we used to do. And last year, we had... 12, 15 volunteers on various old mm -hmm. London Road and everywhere, so that we did do an absolute mm -hmm. instantaneous. And uh, But in order to do that, we had to sign um, a waiver that if anybody was um, electrocuted, 
that's the extreme, but if anybody was injured in doing this, that uh, we would be the indemnity that, that we, mm. we would have indemnified the, um, the 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 people who provide the lights. And we said, well, that's not be really very good because actually our insurers aren't going to cover that either. So we took the risk okay. and did it last year. And we said, no, you've got to get this sorted out. And uh, where are we going to do it? So how are we going to do it? So they said, well, we we, we can't. So the only so what we agreed was was that we would we would do London Road. Sorry, London Road would be on, and we would just put on the the um the crossovers, but all of the high street we would have done by the remote technology. Two days before, we were told the remote technology wasn't working, and that was when Alice sent out the "We need yes, people to stand on lampposts again." Which, uh, but I refused point blank to take the indemnity on this, and I said, "No, this you were supposed to deliver this. You told us you could, and now you're saying you can't. So this has to be your risk." They said, "Absolutely." interesting um mm -hmm. so um so, so they, they, they said they would they would they would take that responsibility which was fine um uh, but then on the night i think it all worked beautifully didn't it so we didn't actually have to have anybody on the lamppost in the end mm -hmm. so what we're trying to move to is and this is where whether we've got enough money how much it's going to cost if we can get the um what was the word he used can you remember now it wasn't a node was it a node? Oh, it was nodes? A node. All right, we've got to get the nodes <laughs> into the um, into the lampposts. And if we can do that, then a little bit like Hive or something else, it will mm. all be able to be done directly by a lamppost. So that's where we're, by, by a laptop, that's what we're moving towards. Whether we'll get there next year or not, I don't know. I haven't got any costs. I've asked Vernon for costs, who is our contractor. And I said, if he can get, although right now he's worrying about the cost for this year, um, but so he's running around uh, trying to get me that information so that we can hopefully get to the point that everything london road high street can then all come on it just might take us a couple of years because it's going to depend on the costs to put those nodes in but uh, this year was a very interesting situation in that we were told one thing then we were told something else and then back to plan a is actually what happened on the night but uh, everybody in the in between one and three were completely confused as to whether they were turning a light on or not i think from, from an in perspective, nobody was aware of this. I no, think exactly. it was all right on the night, as they say. I think <laughs> okay. we just need to. I think it was just more for the chair and the committee just to be aware of of this, yeah. and that yeah. that's something we probably need to think about in the subsequent years to hopefully alleviate the stress that no doubt that caused. <laughs> Alison, do you want to add? Yeah. Yeah. I think, the, to be fair, the problem for the lampposts are less obviously um, transparent. But they are managed by what was, um, which is now in the in And it's just they they have this, everybody has to be heard um, qualified to actually touch the lamppost. And and up until Anervia took over, it seemed to be okay that we touch we weren't actually touching their lampposts we were actually touching our own infrastructure inside the lamppost but then this the general update i don't know if it's nervios or just the the electrics sort of decided that everybody has to be heard so unless we all become heard we couldn't that's you can't press a button on our own yeah. equipment yeah. inside somebody else's yeah. Yeah. and that's where we got to so that you know i think it's just legislation changes and that's where we ended up so and that's where they would do the set if they couldn't do it remotely they would guarantee they could be certain is that wrong Yes, because that, because our contractors who could come in, they were able to bring enough people with them, hers qualified, who could then press those seven buttons and press the other buttons to make the cross lights come. Wow. But what's in the remote is fabulous. I didn't do it, but I was next to the person who did it, and it was fabulous. <laughs> You know, it was all very exciting. Have you put yourself down to press the button next year? Is there a reason? <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you. Thank you, Cats Bond. Thank you for that and, and all contributions there. So we've already noted the report. So item nine, St Barnabas. Um, again, much discussed. And I know uh, for those of us that are councillors on the pretty, Alison sent some photos and things like that mm. this week. And I know as a chairman of the committee how hard yourself and officers have worked over the last few months to get ready for a January opening. Um, of course, got the naming condition, uh, naming uh, recommendations, but Alison, would you just like to give us an update as to where you, where you are from 
um, on St Barnabas. I know we've got the report in front of us, yes. so just anything so else. Yeah. I think some of it's sort of updated yeah. since I wrote the report. So, um, so quite a lot of the cost is going to be on just trying to improve the, um, the heating <laughs> and the sort of environmental part of just being able to run it, that we can afford it. Um, so we finally received the monies from uh, approval from the Sussex for 106, which is paying for the bulk of it. Not as quick as I'd like, but um, it did come through. And then finally, the builder has not been as easy as I'd like. But anyway, we're finally there. And we have now, they've done all the installation of it. Um, and it's now been completely plastered. Obviously, it then got cold. So we've got to try and wait for that. But... Um, all the lighting, all the electrics have been sort of first fixes, um, all the fire um, escapes the lighting and all the smoke detectors, all the first fixes of them. So obviously that was all just waiting on the plaster to dry. Um, and then depending on the decision by council on Wi-Fi, it's hoped that the heating I will be able to get on a Wi-Fi as well, because otherwise, we're not going to be there. So if somebody turns it on and leaves it on all weekend, this is going to be an expensive hobby. So at least if we have some sort of remote access control, I'm hoping to try and, you know, we sort of keep, keep the costs of heating to sort of a minimum. But although I don't, I was really, really hoping we'd be, we'd be done by Christmas and we'd be open early January and now can't see any reason I just can't move forward until I can get this plastered, right? And it, there's no heating in the building, and basically no just in the building that will get turned off. So currently we're just literally waiting for nature to take its course. So um, we're not going to be done by Christmas, but I do can't see any reason why we're not open by the end of January. So we're still in January, just not as early as I think. Thanks, Nathaniel. Thank you. I think it's worth actually we've waited this long, let's do it properly. Um, so you know you can't you can't do anything but wait for it to dry actually there's nothing there to dry, you can't plug anything in to, to dry it out. So um unless you've got a generator in it before cost. So you charge it if you have a ticket in there, isn't it? You put the cost of that generator in, is it more income or it's, it's gonna level it out at some point. So um but I have seen some photographs and it is it's looking good inside. It's it's um it's looking a little transformed already. So uh, um well done, just keep going and if we can get some of this Wi-Fi decisions made today, then you can get your next bits and sun as soon as as soon as plaster permits. So well done team. Cats upon just to say I happen to be walking past the lunch from off and get out for lunch walks, but I managed to. And they were doing the work from just to say, just to they you know, they were doing a good job from what I could tell. Um, the insulation looked great and all the wiring, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, it look, looked really good. And I'll, it's the first time I've seen it, actually. I haven't managed to see it yet. So I thought it's going to be a, a real positive addition to the community, especially in that area. Um, I think my, my only, and this is not for now, but in the future, the entrance, because it's so close to the front there, it, does, it doesn't look as appealing. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, again, not for now, but probably the future. We may just want to think about that. I'm just from a sort of, perspective of entrance to get things in and out and I'm not sure I'm assuming it's safe access in the side no, is it through right. that through the ramp okay and there's we check there's enough <coughs> movement and space okay. thank you thank you and I think one of the other points as well I drove by it yesterday again just to check the no notice board as well is really helpful mm. close to the road and people will be able to see that very clearly so and again, thank you very much, Alison. For, and I know the team worked really hard to come up with the best solutions they can, uh, which is much appreciated. So uh, we've also got the naming to deal with as well. Um, do we make a decision on the do you want to do on the, the Wi-Fi wi 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 first? So just so before we go to the names, then so we've got <laughs> um, these quotes in front of us. Um, Town clerk, obviously. It's not the right time frame for us to be able to actually make a decision. So it's right, is it that we will uh, work with yourself? Well, I think and, what Alison's asking yeah. is whether or not we wait for another quote, yeah. whether we go ahead with what we've got. Well, there are three options. So sorry, I'm giving my piece of paper in the chair. <laughs> There's one for the second quote. 
Okay. I don't know if Alice wants to add something to this. Well, no, no. So we started off with the help. Um, Sarah's been doing a lot of work on, on the Wi Fi for me. Um, and she, we started off with quotes, and, and we were sort of recommended that we had them with support, weren't we? Yes. Um, everybody seemed to feel that was the way to go, but it became apparent that wasn't cheap. Yes. So after feeling that was our absolute ideal, and of course, what it will do is it will ensure that somebody comes out and sorts out. So if you if we have got hires that are dependent on it, um, you know, we'll be able to rectify it much quicker than if we go down the lines of sort of the equivalent to what you have in your household where you wait weeks when your Wi-Fi is out. Um, and also, obviously, if I'm depending on the, on the heating and things. However, it's expensive. <laughs> And it made, you know, it made me, made us feel that we should look at a cheaper option, which is what we did, but we've only managed to get one quote at the moment because we've been, we can't get any further because it, it's not registered. We can't register it because it, <coughs> we had to read a name, but we were a bit, we paid a bit of sort of a, a catch 22 on that. We can do everything, but obviously we're not going to open with Wi-Fi if we, allow this to go any further. Thanks, Karen. Thank you. Um, so I've had a look at the, the two proposals now, and I've looked at the quotes, of, you know, on the on the um, amendment, and the, I agree that, you know, service is, you think about it, you know, is it worth it, is it not? You looked at the broadband only, it's £120 a year more, although it's £14 per month, um, uh, £40 pounds a month, Com compared to that, it's only £120 pounds more, £10 pounds a month more, um, to ensure that you can get somebody in to fix it. So um, for £10, pounds, you know, fees will go up the following year to recoup itself eventually. I think, you know, we've put so much into this now, for the sake of £120, pounds, I would suggest that we go for quote two with broadband and support, um, with an annual cost of £683.40, is my opinion. Thank you, Ken. Uh, Councillor Pond. I think you've answered the question earlier. Is I was kind of a slight miss as to what the urgency was on this, but if, is it to do with the heat? So, what do we go? If it's talking about heating, and well, firstly, I'm assuming we're going to want it on over when it's not in use just to stop any mould. What, what's the kind of so? What I'm trying to get to is do we may need to make a decision now or can we wait till January, February? Because, i.e., do we need the heating on now, therefore, the control over that? during this period or could it wait till we've got it named we've got some more quotes back mm -hmm. I, I think the high time heating not that necessarily we are looking at high but the high yeah, that's, the, that's the name I know so my apologies um the high time heating I think it works it, it is not dependent on wi-fi so no you don't have to um it might be. It is. Is it? Yeah. It's quite it is. So if we don't do this, yeah. then we can't, we can't, get the heat again. I, can't, can't rent it out. I need to just do a normal heating yeah. system. Yeah. Um, we have no gas, so it's got to be electric. Yeah. Um, and if you want to rent, rent it out in February, March. Well, this is so, yeah, exactly. Really as Karen really really said, then these things are able to be revisited once. We've You've got an annual contract. An annual you could contract. Have contract. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah. is it, that was my second question. Is it an annual contract? What's the contract period? Because it could be that we just go with this for now and then we revisit it in a year's time and so maybe it costs sure us an extra two hundred pounds or the security of we'll probably spend that on electricity yeah. if we if it's on for a night when it shouldn't be, etc. So is it do, is it an annual I'm sure contract period? Fine. Some of us are having two years or longer. So given the recommendation, given the comments, are we happy to maybe go with the quote too on the basis that we seek an annual contract so that we can revisit it again in 12 months time, but it allows us to get press on with the opening and we know we've got this, the, 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 <laughs> the, the amenities in place that we need. Is that? I'm happy to second I'm happy, that. I'm happy to go second. But we'll just have a show of hands for that, yeah. please. Thank you. Um, and then we can't do any of this if we haven't got a name. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so, I heard JB Ball was in the room. Uh, well, oh, I, um, 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, that would be a lovely name, I think, as Ponte. However, I think also I've heard some, uh, Sun, the Sunnyside Barn has also been uh, mentioned, which I get because it's next to Sunnyside Close and it takes on the board the St Barnabas aspects of the name. So um, I, do people want to have a discussion regarding the name? I, personally, I'm happy to propose Sunnyside Barn. I think it's a good yeah. name, and I think it will that. really resonate, actually. Yeah, I could second that, then. Thank you, Councillor Sorry. Any other comments? I think it's very apt, yeah. because it was known as the barn. Yeah. So, yes, let's not reinvent it. And who, Ed, Pandora's? The zone? I think it's a box, and I think that's where that came from. Oh, I from. see. Right. I spent some time looking at some of these cats. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm very happy with the oh, barn. Because yeah. it gives the geographical yeah. situation and a nod to the past. Okay. Um, I feel good vibes about that in the room. So uh, <laughs> can we have a show of hands to do that, then, please? That's carried. Chair, would you like us to do a press release on this? I think it probably it probably deserves it. And also well, an update as to, to where we are. Plan, everything? Yeah. yeah, I think it'd be quite nice. Mm. Yeah. And how we got to the name as well, you know. Yeah. Well, as well done to Alison for finding the old um, information on the wall in a big um, frame, which explained all about the barn and everything. It was great. Just stuck up there on the wall and no one had ever read it. <laughs> one of my neighbours knew all about it. Oh. Would, would the museum be able to help with the images and things from like, days gone by from that? They might have a... They might. Yeah. They, they might, they might. <laughs> we can ask. <laughs> yeah, okay. Are we going to have it on the website as well? Are we going to have a little page? I think perhaps when it's all done, I think that'd be quite useful to do that, mm -hmm. a little bit of the, 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 the journey, and it can talk about its history and maybe link over to the, the museum and and then current use and some nice pictures of it in use. So I think when we're done, it will be a, a nice little story for us to have up there. For people to, to see that historical thing and Alice can have a QR code as well. So we've got to get get everything about bookings on there. Mm -hmm. That's sort of the that would be the next stage, but really we we're just waiting for the name before we started putting anything on there and then putting it something else just to add to confusion. So, yeah, so and once we've got that on, obviously Alice can then put her history or her link on to that sort of that page to that on. That'd be nice. Okay, so thank you very much, everyone. And really good to see the progress on, on uh, the sunny set farm. Uh, item 10, St Margaret's Loop, a regular fixture on this committee's agenda. Um, so we have had a report showing some of the progress since the last meeting. Um, there is, a, I think, a further update available. Town Clark, are you right if I ask you to present? Yeah, just sure, sure. No, no problem. I know you're tight together. Um, I've received the report yesterday. Um, on the retaining wall, which is what we were, we were waiting for. Um, the report, is the, the, the surveyor's report, the report has shown that the retaining wall has a historic crack caused by movement, but not recent movement, um, and it is 13 points in length. Now, I don't know how long that is and what that really means, but that's what it says. Um, it suggested that heli bars are put in on every third point along the fissure to stabilise it. Um, in addition, it needs some further remedial works, um, some some um, uh, mortar um, remedies and some more vegetation clearance off the wall, which will prevent damage in the longer term. And they've also talked about some um, running water, which has caused a problem as well in the past. But the immediate works are the helibars on the crack, a little bit like a staple was how we were talking about it earlier, wasn't it, uh, Councillor? That effectively it's gonna just make sure that the, 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 um, the wall has stability. 
Um, we've asked West Sussex County Council and we've also contacted a local builder in the process of doing so he's away this weekend um, to give a rough estimate for the work so that we can then determine where we're going with procurement. So this isn't for them to be quoting for the work, but them to give us a rough idea. Are we talking over 10,000, under 10,000? Where are we? So we know how the procurement rules are going to work as we go out for this. <coughs> we have a finger in the air we're probably looking somewhere around the fifteen thousand pound mark it might be 10 it might be 20 it's going to be somewhere around there that's a finger in the air based on the fact that we've actually we have actually used heli bars on the um and repointing on the um the the low wall by the Mackindo statue and from what that cost then looking at the size of this um this, this wall that's kind of where we've got that figure from but it really is a very very much uh, uh, very <coughs> based on that and hopefully West Sussex and or the local builder will be able to give us a better idea of what we're talking about. In the meantime, um, we have instructed as per the last, um, last committee, um, various states to gain agreement from Railway Pass that if West Sussex take the bridges and East Grinstead take the retaining wall with no commutable sums, then the land be transferred at no cost to East Grinstead Town Council. So we are now waiting, now that we know that the wall is is principally safe just needs a bit of work on it which isn't going to hopefully cost a fortune um, and that money is there we have got that we have got that type of a, a 15 20 thousand pound um cushion in our um in, in our pot of money which has already been set aside for, for this type of work um so if they're going to agree to all that in principle then our next stage will be to press land logical for their answer regarding the capitation of the cost of the drawing up of the scheme um, if Railway Pass refused to part with the land without any further payment, then I'll have to revert back to this committee and you'll have to tell me whether you are willing to then part with additional monies or not in order to purchase the, um, the, the, the loop. Um, I guess that will depend on how much they're asking. Um, uh, we've also, but at this point in time, we've also said to um, uh, Brazer states that our offer is that um, with West Sussex taking the bridges, us taking the wall, both parties having to do a fair amount of cost of work. We want the we want the land transferred at no cost, and we would want railway pass to meet the legal costs of this transfer to be taken place. So that's that's our gambit, if you like, that we've opened with them, um, and we will we will get some answers to that hopefully soon. Um, it's always hopefully soon and it always seems to take forever, but um, we, all I can do is keep saying we've done our bit, we've pushed our bit and uh, we're now waiting for a response back and I will contact Bray Estates at least once a week going forward to find out when they've met with them, when they've responded to them, to see when we get a response back so I can then share with the rest of the committee. Thank you very much, Tan Clark. Any questions or comments? To where we are. We, we are actually reporting progress in this committee tonight. <laughs> there is it's progress. It's um, and we've been waiting for this little bit of progress for nine months, eight, nine months. Oh, longer. But, but just for this, this bit, bit of the bridge. So I feel that we're actually, for the first time in four years, really leaping somewhere now. So it's close. We just need RPL to come back yeah. and, and, and say yes. They it's do that. It and it, it, all falls into place beautifully for the spring. Yeah. Just need an answer. Well Just keep on it. Keep on it, Town Clark. Thank you. Thank you. Just out of interest, I was just interested because going back to what the question catch point would obviously when if we do take ownership and stuff, we've got all the at least you know we've got the other to, uh, arboreal software that we can now uh, track all the trees with as well. So this is gonna, yeah. we're gonna be running. We're going to run once we've done the linking. We're going to be running on this project. So uh, I'll be all happy to note that report and the no update. Please. Thank you very much, and thanks for the work on that. Item eleven, Mid Sussex Marathon. We have a report in front of us, and we are asked to recommend increasing the budget from five hundred to a thousand pounds in line with the other town councils. I have to say, I, I, perhaps it's just me, but I hadn't realised how much the mid Sussex Marathon actually cost to to run, to, to organise those three legs. And it does seem that, I know we've got the lowest entry in East Grinstead. I have actually participated in it myself a number of times. But, uh, <laughs> and in fact, done the whole marathon. Yes. But um, the obviously the Hayward Heath and Burgessy ones have seemed to attract more, sort of, should we say, um, competitive 
runners due to the status of those events. Now as has been a bit more, um, it's a bit more cross country. Um, I'm happy to propose that we do increase it in line with other councils. I think it's really good. It's good publicity. And um, I think that we want to show that East Quincy Town Council was, um, you know, it's 40 birth with the other town councils. So I'm happy to propose. Is there a seconder? Second. Thank you. Thanks, Have you got any comments or questions on the Council Point? Again, I'm, I'm fully in favour of these types of events. I think, and it was sort of noted here, the kind of where it is and the timing seems to be a big, we're not getting our best from what we're putting in. And actually, I'd even, uh, be not record, but put in more if it was work better for us in terms of where it maybe started and finished. You know, the fact that the running club have a competitive and um, a competition on the same day and can't help run the event and obviously their runners won't be in the events that's mm. naturally people not taking part and i think it's the same weekend as the is it the main um rotary club or the main day and lines lines thank you so I, i'm wholeheartedly in favor of it i do think and it was noted here that potentially is looking around timing mm -hmm. for next year and that's i think rerouting for the future as well actually because i i mean you actually have to climb gates and style and sometimes you actually have to wait whilst there's a queue if you're not at the front you have to wait for other people to clear them before not you get you, I'm sure. <laughs> thank you Kat, but i was trying to empathize with them. so yeah so it was just a it was just a kind of i for one have heard about it because it's at the it's out part, of town yeah. it's out of town it's not as visible um and i just think that's maybe something you want to think about thank you Tax road. I was just going to ask, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, uh, who actually selects the route? Our route was um, put together by um, East Grinstead Pry um, back in 2011 when we first started talking about this. The route remains largely unchanged since then. Um, there have been a lot of talks about it being, uh, being moved and I think everyone, it, it, we need a conversation with the Lions because I think everyone would agree that if we could actually start it off um, from um, the top end of the East Grimstead High Street and then send the runners off down the Forest Way mm. and then they could do a bit of the um, reservoir and then back again, they could get their 10 miles in that way. And, um, and I think it would it would add something potentially to the to the, the Lions day. The only problem with that, of course, is that the Lions are on the Monday and that is 6.2, not a problem with that particularly, but then that means we've got to find a 10 mile route in Burgess Hill and swap it around. But we could, we could have the opportunity, which was originally suggested to circulate the event so that it didn't always finish in Burgess Hill and that it could potentially finish here or be whatever. So I think all this is all back on the table. All back on the table for for this next coming not round. The next, not no, the coming okay. round. It will it will be up at the rugby club, um, and it will be the same route. But um, I think there's a lot of serious conversation about it being changed. About talking now about yes. where that's going to be. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. How, who 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 starts that conversation? Oh, um, we, we have a board. So the Mid Sussex Marathon Board um, has representatives from each of the town councils and it has representatives from the district council and um, it has representatives from um, places for pleasure and also active homes. And it is active homes that will be having the conversation with, um, they'll be talking to the Lions in the first instance about moving things around, but they'll also be the ones working with nice work about what the different routes potentially could mm. be. Mm. So they will be doing that from the point of view that, that when we first came up with the routes, we didn't have nice work on board. Um, nice work are race directors that's what they do so it is their job to come up with the routes and to say and because over the years the others have been moved a little bit as well mm -hmm. so uh, it's, it's it's always done by them okay, thank you not overstating my own ability to have to say, i'm sort of fearing quite dread as if you were a runner sort of the idea that you run down to the roads of worm and then you've got quite a little uphill journey home for the back mm, end of the 10 right. miles which would be quite a challenge i think we might get reputation for being one of the more tricky um 10 mile routes but so be it it'd be, it'd be very pretty Again, not your face chair. But <laughs> <laughs> you're with I was just, I was just, yes, exactly. Anyway, but um, the we... serious runners apparently absolutely love the East Grinstead leg because it is the most challenging. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I think even have we ever cracked that, uh, given we are, well, you know, at the top, mm. it's going to be a tough, it's going to be a tough one. <laughs> exactly. exactly. So are we happy? Oh, Councillor Gibbs, sorry. I was just going to say, I've run a part of it. I haven't done the whole thing. So if you have any tips or... Oh, well, thank you. I'm happy to share time. offline now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kat. <laughs> Are we happy to approve that recommendation of the increase um, and but take on board the comments that for future we'd like to um, get more bang for our back, as it were? Um, approve. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, count uh, item 12, fees and charges. So we have a report in front of us. Mm -hmm. Um, so, as I think it's clear from the report, so it's an across the board 5% increase in uh, rates except for uh, our wedding costs. And I, I know I have spoken to Town Clerk about that separately, and I understand that is because we think our rates are sort of what the market would bear there already. So, um, another 5% there could be quite. Um, not necessarily advantageous to us. Yes, it's exactly. disadvantageous to us. Does anyone have any questions or comments in respect to the reports? Are we happy to um, recommend the proposals as shown in the report <coughs> in Appendix A and ask those to proceed, those um, recommendations to go to the Finance General Purposes Committee? I'm happy to propose that. I'm happy to second that, that Chair. Chair. Thank you very much. Oh, yes. But I would like to just point out, it says that East Grinstead in Bloom, number of meetings 23-24 is zero. We've actually met twice and we'll be meeting twice more. Oh, up until March. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We've got one booking in for you, which we've got as an update for Chairman to actually make that point. But mm -hmm. I wasn't aware that you'd been in the building prior to this one. We were here on Tuesday. Which Alice knew yeah, about. Yeah, that one we know. And the one before, the months before, oh, okay. which she knew about. Yeah, so my apologies, I missed that one. But mm. when I wrote like this report, yes. I didn't know about Tuesday, but I have asked Chair to update yeah, we have yeah, the report. Mm. So, yes. Right, okay. And, and also, the. Um, um, I'll tell you what yeah. we'll do, Chair, what we'll do, Councillor, is we'll deal with um, Bloom. Yeah. And then we'll get you back in the room for the rest of them. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because yeah. <laughs> it's not fair for you to miss the rest of them because you're no. entitled to that. Could be fair. Can I just ask something on the Yes. Oh, it was just to say it'd be useful to know um, sort of the numbers of hires we've had for each of the sort of total number that we've had, just to kind of get a sense of, you know, how busy and particularly the, the sort of prime seasons for ceremony. So it'd just be good in the future just to have a sense of the numbers of. How many you have? Wedding, yeah. Weddings and just number of bookings for some years. So, do we like them to be split down for the different um, the different venues? Got, so, Old Courthouse, East Court, and Reading Hall. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping you've got it in the Excel spreadsheet, uh, which um, is easy to. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Excel over there. We, we, we've got it in a, in a system that's pretty Even like that. Whether it's an Excel spreadsheet, I have zero well, idea. But um, the information will be there somewhere. Somewhere. You'll have to go and look. I don't simple. know. I don't know. <laughs> we, we, we use a software system that did used to give us numbers, and I actually used to put it in my own little internal report. The system got updated and it, and it just vanished. And we went back to them a couple of times and said, well, Where did that go? Yeah. It was quite a useful sort of. Um, sort of numbers it gave me. Um, we tried to split it um, to whether it was a free booking, um, whether it was a council booking, yeah. or whether it was a, a regular hire. So we have it all in place. We haven't been able to access the information. Whether, and I can't make RBS, who we actually use, do it any quicker. So I can certainly definitely give you the numbers of um, ceremonies because that is registered separately. The, the others, hopefully, okay. but I will certainly try. Thank you. Um, so we just, did you say we, we should just cover East Coast and Bloom 
to start with. Yes, yeah, so oh, that way you can have counsel yeah, more quickly. Yeah, um, are we happy to propose? Uh, I, I guess I'd have to declare an interest in dementia action. Um, uh, yes, uh, well, you know, you, you no, because you're appointed to that chairmanship Absolutely. due to your being a councillor on this on this council, um, whereas Mrs. Mockford obviously is completely separate. Okay. Uh, so, uh, are we happy to continue allowing these folks to come in to use the meeting room for up to six occasions? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I'm happy to um, yeah. propose that. Yes. Uh, Seems uh, seconded by Councillor Pond and agreed. So if we're happy for that, then we should invite Councillor Mockford. Yeah, everyone that would be fantastic. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll, I did not think we're going to go through that, but I think we'll do rest on block, maybe. Yes, <laughs> exactly. We give it a bad news. Oh, I've got some bacon, <laughs> <laughs> so we'll take the So we we're happy to propose continuation of the existing arrangement. Does anyone have any other comments on the um, remainder of the organisations before we come to Stone Quarry Cafe? Uh, the only comment I had was um, all the other ones have got uh, sort of new sort of numbers up to, apart from the Member of Parliament surgeries, which just says any time there's a surgery. I don't suppose that will be a problem going forward, and, but... And, um, they, yeah. don't, they don't have them happen that often, no. which is why we've, we've kind of left a bit vague. Yeah. Um, once upon a time, they were regular as clockwork, um, but now it's, I think a lot of that changed following COVID, really. Um, yeah. it's, it's, it's whether there's people have booked in, <clears> and if they haven't booked in, then it just gets cancelled. So we don't really have a a number anymore do we it's all rather fluid <laughs> yeah i don't think there's been many at all i think it, there was obviously the incident with the count you know the mp being being yes um, stamped and david amos and, yes yeah. and i think that sort of, yeah. uh, that that definitely seemed to curtail mm. um they have happened i don't wish to say that they don't yeah. happen at all but they certainly didn't happen at the same regularity mm. as it did before Okay. the incident fine and i guess my other comment would be if things like land prostate screening day it went from one to two or something and we wanted to charge we might ask them to let us know and we might you know consider ad hoc requests during the course mm. of the year as and when they arise cancer found yes sorry just going through them and looking at them so please correct me if i've read this wrong i was reading it terribly late last night but um things like um East Prince of Fair Trade, rather than take them on block, there's a couple like East Prince of Fair Trade, they haven't used it at all um, for the last two years. Is that right? She was contacted last year because every, we, the current committee asked us to contact everybody and ask them would they be using it, and she said yes. But, but they haven't. But we haven't heard from her. My, my apologies for Glenn, but I'm sure I got that one right. Um, and also the, the um, Mid Sussex Voluntary Action, um, <coughs> they've not used anything. We also give them a grant um, towards that. Do we feel that they should be having the same, you know, up to five? Musa have recently had a, um, or if they haven't had it, they're about to have it, um, a training event, which we agreed to have as a free hire. We... <sighs> We had a conversation with them about about their training events because we didn't feel that it was um, it was the the um, intention of this committee to allow the rooms to be used for for events where people were being charged to attend them. Mm. Um, so we had a conversation with them last year and said, if you're having a training event, we don't think you can use a free room, so please don't do that. Um, and they hadn't, and then they were running a first aid course. Um, very very recently or, or it's not coming up coming up shortly um where they just didn't have enough people booked on to make any money so they came back and asked and we said we would allow it to be a free room use on that particular occasion can you add to that because i'm not quite sure what happened after that so they had the free they have free use rooms that have been granted for many years but they also have a grant that committee that goes, you know, assume I they continue. use the grant, yes. yes, yeah. And they use, so what happens is, is that they, you, we use the grant money that we got to offset 
And so all their all their committee, all their meetings goes through our our records as paid for from the grant that we allocate. Right. In previous years, they've used it because I think it was used as sort of an office. They yep. were based. Okay. On, um, they. So the grant basically covered their rent. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. If I can take you back <coughs> a few years, um, obviously the, lots of things changed, haven't they? Yeah. The, the, the lot, CBS lot used to have an office here. Mm. They gave up the office, and because because they had an office here, and the council granted them um, an annual grant which covered the cost of their rent. They then gave the office up which was useful to us because they gave us another room that we could rent out because they just weren't using yeah. it. So what we agreed with them is a committee agreed at the time that uh, they would, instead of having an office, which they rented, they would have a grant, which they could use to offset against hire of rooms. Okay. So that's how we've kind of got to, thank you, Alison, because that's how we've okay. kind of got yeah. to where well, we've got. Makes sense. Okay, that's fine. Can I just suggest that it's not really for use because it's a grant, so it probably should be kept separate. If that is true. So uh, they're not registered on here for free use. So they were, I used to register the free use that was <coughs> when, when the grant money ran out. When the grant money ran out. But we haven't yeah. run out of grant money for right. last yes. year and currently probably not this year right. either. So I don't register that as a free right. use because that goes through our accounting as a sort of a paid. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's fine. So we're not losing anything. So if, if they want something and the rooms are all booked out, they can't have it. <clears throat> Just because they're entitled to five if they want it on a day that we can't give it because it's already booked. They just can't have it on that day. That's, that's yeah. interesting. That's yeah. the case with anybody and their friends. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So just to ensure that, you know, people that do want it that are paying are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I don't think we've ever thrown somebody out who had booked a room who's a free use mm -hmm. because somebody then comes along who's paying. But no, we yeah, certainly that's moved that's them. And then somebody just goes, oh, this is about the council chamber, and we say, oh, you get the cup of some sleep then. Mm -hmm. So we do shuffle them, but into a room they can fit in. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't suddenly go and get the mess. Oh, 22 of us. Um, do we often get other organisations come to us yet? Is it, um, do we often get other organisations come to us recently for use? To, 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 new ones, new ones. I don't know. Have we had a recent, in the last year? It's nice to see QBH back, Queen Victoria it's Hospital. Certainly not asked for use in the last year. We have yeah. in the past. Um, some have, yeah, there was a, some have had it for a shorter time, but I think, I mean, the least, the probably was the most recent ones have been the lions for the prostate screening. That was in the last two years mm. of there now, but not in the last year. Okay. okay. Thank you, Chair. Sorry. So are we, if we take Strong Quarry Cafe out of it, are we happy to take the rest on block in line with the current status as set out in the reports? I'm happy to propose that. Having second that, Chair. Second Chair Brian. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so we've kept Stone Quarry separate. I think we're all familiar with the fact that I think this committee in June 22 has in effect given, and earlier this year has given a good 19 months free um, storage for Stone Quarry Cafe whilst they were sorting out um, their sort of premises move, which has now happened. If we were to rent that out at market rate, we are confident that the rate would be about £585 a month plus VAT. Mm -hmm. um, I know that Mid Sussex are moving to a charging rent at the post office where they are based in Stone Quarry. And I think we have to decide whether we're happy, what would be a perfectly rentable and in demand space to have um, to be able to charge rent whether we're happy to allow that to carry on free of charge um i have to say if it helps the committee uh, council margaret belsey has had a couple of conversations with sarah howland in the last week or so knowing that this was on the agenda and i think sarah howland is the quarry cafe's understanding that uh, the 
that, that they can't carry on um, using the space free of charge, especially when it is in such demand. And I think they will be willing and are expecting to pay something towards it. And indeed, it'll be done for the Quarry Cafe. If that's the case that we put forward that, then they would also feel free to look at alternative premises themselves and see what else might be commercially available. So from my perspective, I think it's natural time for us to be looking to charge uh, to charge that. But the question, I guess, comes as to what amount <laughs> we might want to charge. Um, I think I'm happy to take on board any comments, but I mean, given it's is a charitable um, a charitable organisation that's doing a lot of good work, I, I, I'll be looking at something like three hundred pounds a month or something plus VAT. But I'm happy to take on board any comments and uh, other proposals. Councillor Farrell. Thank you. Um, I, I I concur completely with what you said, and it, it is a case of setting really out what that charge would be, whether it be a rolling increase. Um, you know, um, to, to get to a point where we're happy because so that they can start building up and understanding their funds um, because they're going to have to be balancing books that they've not had to balance before. So it might be tricky, you know, um, to begin with. So I would like to sit on a rolling scale, an increasing rolling scale. Um, I don't know what that period would be. I'm quite happy for the committee to have their opinion on that and what that would look like. Um, but um, I definitely think it's time to start charging. Thank you. Yeah, I agree, Catherine. And notwithstanding, I think that all of us around the room know what a good job the Corby yeah, Cafe have done. And none of us is aimed mm -hmm. at that. It's also, we've got a fudgy for duty, I'm sure, as town councillors to make sure that yeah. we're making the best use of our own estate. Councillor Pond. I'm just going to agree with Councillor Farrell. I think that rolling scale will set the right expectations that, that we're, we've been very accommodating over the last 18, 19 months. We'll continue to do it, but there doesn't need to be an end point at some point this can't continue for forever and then so that would be on that just one of my <coughs> general observations is there seems to be constant talk about storage so it'd be interesting to know and maybe to take away is what is is there enough ability to store things in each so is there commercially available storage in the town uh, available and if not so if there is the question is how much do they charge and question two is, if there isn't, is that something that we may as a town council want to think about, not for commercial, for businesses, but for charities, if we're finding that, I know St Barnabas, there was some discussions about the NTC, that were struggling with storage. Mm -hmm. We're hearing now that Stone Quarry Cafe, they're struggling with storage. If it is, you know, the, the charities and, and the voluntary groups are struggling with storage, you know, if there isn't commercially available units that are reasonable, then maybe that's something we need to think about. Thank you, Councillor. Well, for example, well, uh, a couple of years ago, I actually put on Facebook if Mid Sussex was to put storage facilities in the town, would they be in demand? And it was overwhelmed with mm -hmm. comments that said that there was a, there was a lack of storage facilities mm -hmm. in the town. It didn't mean that we were actually able to regress <laughs> from bringing those storage, but yeah, you know, for the purpose of district plan, neighbourhood plan, it is really important. I think that we do look to make sure that we have got land allocated for mm. those storage facilities. Um, Councillor Mock. Another one who would be very grateful <laughs> for some storage for the East Minster Dingley machinery, which is mostly stacked in my hall at the moment. <laughs> yes. Yes, no, I, I hear you. Um, any other comments? Otherwise, I think it's probably going to come down to um, trying to come up with a number and a, a timeline. I mean, I was happy, I don't know what, how quickly you wanted it to be rolling, but I, I was going to propose £300 a month plus VAT for the next 12 months and then review it again this time next year, but I'm um, happy to take on board any other comments. No, I was going to possibly say the same thing, with maybe every three months it goes up another £50. I don't know, I'm happy to take... Or maybe, maybe starting at a lower base, maybe it's £200... <laughs> For the first three months, two hundred and fifty for the next three, three hundred for the next three, and three hundred and fifty or something. I think the point is to try and encourage and add a bit of impetus to finding alternatives. I think just I think we have to set a limit. Oh, Can I just ask the town clerk? What, what um, it's also all right, very very well saying a year. Have you got people wanting this size office and this size space? Is it? If we say a year, is it going to limit us as well as 
limiting them. It's, or, difficult, it's difficult to be 100% sure. However, we do have a tenant in the building who we suspect might like that room if they could get it. At the moment, they are um, hiring Mayor's Parlour and this room when they need extra space. Yeah. Um, and I suspect, given the option of taking another office on the ground floor full time, they could well be interested in that. There have been other um, uh, advances to the council about that office since it's been empty or when it was first made empty, um, but um, or, or when Stone Curry, Curry went for, first went in. Um, so it's difficult to say whether somebody would walk through the door tomorrow and say they wanted it, um, or whether or not it, uh, it it might sit around for a little bit longer. I, I don't know if you've got any better feel to it than that, but we think we have someone interested. I see 12 months is quite a long time, is what I'd say, <clears throat> for us not to be made for potential income. I mean, all I know is when the room upstairs came up, it went quite quickly. We had a couple of inquiries, um, and somebody was sort of... You've got office, you've got parking, you've got their website. They were quite sad. Fabulous aspect, you know. I just think 12 months is quite long, personally. Right. But, you know, I'm only one. Or do we or give a three-month break clause or something like that, saying it's terminate, ter terminable? Or, yeah, no exercise the size of three months. Perhaps already. Um, no, thanks, Chair. How long? I mean, does Stone Quarry Cafe? Do they want it indefinitely? Is that their? Is that their thing? Or, or we don't know. If the price is right, I think they'd stay put. Yes. Which is why. Which is why. Increasing. I think they've also. I mean, I, I know. Yeah, they've got fridges in there, they've got storage and um, a shelving in there, um, and it is, it's food storage is what's in there, which yeah. um, we so had some think, concerns yeah, about some of what the things they were storing at some point in time in there, because mm. um, obviously we do, we, it's an old building, we've got cellars, and we do, you know, we, we don't want to encourage rodents onto the first floor, mm -hmm. um, but uh, to be very fair, they haven't been, and no. it's all been fine. Um, but uh, it does remain at the back of our mind to say that that is a concern. Um, but, um, you know, I've got to say they have been impeccable with um, with what they've stored, mm. but it is food stuff that they are storing. Mm. I believe that um, as a result of these conversations, I think um, Quarry Cafe is going to also look at other yeah. venues. So that they're, mm. I think a few connections have been made. So I take on board those comments. So shall we go with <laughs> Buy a lower. Yeah. so maybe 200 pounds plus vat for the first three months uh, uh follow, following the uh, council pond so it goes up to, so, it goes, so 250 for the first three months 275 300 um from june onwards plus vat and um we uh, look at it again in nine months, in nine months. Uh, so at this sort of September cycle, we review the situation when it's. And if they find somewhere else, then obviously you know, yeah, it's more beneficial to them, for sure, and obviously okay. more beneficial to have office, office, offices. Yeah, exactly, because I think that's the thing, is that they're using it for storage. But it's okay, the room's got more potential than that. Yeah. So, yeah. so is that? Are you okay with that, town clerk? I'm just getting that thing on. Let's drink it again. <laughs> So 250, 275, 300 on for the three month, three month cycles plus VA, that's plus VAT, and then we'll look at it again in September. Oh, so got, um, um, just to clarify, I'm being a bit stupid. Are you is it is it basically you're giving them nine months notice? No, no. We're, oh sorry, it'll be 250, 275, 300 and 300 on an ongoing basis, but with the committee having a look at it in, in nine, nine months' time. time. We might want to recruit it in nine months' time. Okay. So 250 plus VAT per month to be reviewed and raised by £25 every three months yeah. and then to be reviewed in nine months by the committee. I, yeah. I think it'd be yeah. nice to have a strong sense of there with the, the expectation that it may well increase or something to share, just to... Yeah. I, I, so I, for the review, review. review. Yeah. So with the intention of reaching the first one. Yes, I think that's the point. Yes. Well done, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Alison. So, yeah, I think I'm just failing to follow it as well. Um, my apologies. So they get a tenancy agreement, like yeah. everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, everybody runs on a tenancy agreement. Oh. Because of business rates and things, I have to make sure everybody has a tenancy agreement, sure. yeah, because otherwise we are liable to the business rates. When they yeah. have a tenancy agreement, the tenancy agreement says they have to pay their own business rates. Now they are a charity, because they don't pay, but that's, that's, the, rules. Rules. That's, that's the rules. That's the rules. So I have to make sure I follow it very carefully. So they need a tenancy agreement. I have to be honest, 
a year's tenancy agreement is a much easier way of doing it, but I can do a nine month tenancy if that's what you're looking to do. But I'm just a bit confused. Are we looking at a year's tenancy or am I? I mean, if I, I, if I'm, I'm happy if I'm, to, I, I think. I've, so, so after that, what would, we, yeah, what would happen from their side if they find somewhere else? How much notice they have to give? Well, we that? we give everybody a month notice okay. to to leave. Fine. We try and you know this isn't. I always say to people, it's, it's, it's a business in that we are trying to be fair to yeah. all businesses that come okay. in. Um, most people give longer, but you know we do yeah. allow everybody. We can give notice in a month, and they can give notice in a month, which is in yeah. the in, in the tenancy. Well, I'm everyone. happy with 250, 275, 300 for the rest of the year, um, and we'll review it in September to see whether we feel that's as um, you know, whether the aims of both parties are being met. Yeah, because we hear from the agreement, yeah. nine months. Or but that would give them, in, yeah, and that would give them enough time. That would give them enough time if we had the discussions in September for them to find somewhere else. And, in January, would that work with the people? Yes, yeah, so it's a 12 month tenancy yeah. agreement with the, the amounts yeah. agreed as just stipulated. Yeah, we will just in September make yeah. decisions, so they basically have three months' notice yeah, yeah. as to what we're doing in January. Correct, yeah, that's, so, right. Is yeah, that's right. Right. perfect. That's all right. I was just confused yeah. whether it was a nine month yeah. agreement. I didn't want to get it wrong. We have changed it now. No, good, fabulous. Cats ready? Just a character. I'm confused. I'm in a, in a nutshell, basically, yeah. what you're saying is that as a yeah, committee, we're months. happy yeah. to only charge £300 for the rental of that room ongoing for the foreseeable future. The next year. No, for, what, for the last six months. Committing for 12 months with a review at nine months. 300 plus the months. Months. Yeah. Okay, so what are you telling them that's going to happen after 12 months? Well, we're going to review it next September. Okay. To a commercial level. Yeah. I think it will have resolved itself. So. Yeah. So I can there I just are. be clear that I have got the wording <laughs> correctly here for your because I'm the gonna, wording has to be right. Well, I've altered it slightly, but it's going to be very easy for Alison to drop us straight yes. into the tenancy yes. agreement. So this is the I'm sure this is exactly what you're talking about. So the Stone Quarry Cafe to be charged from the beginning of February 2024, £250 plus VAT per month, to be reviewed and raised by £25 on each of the 1st of May and 1st of August, and then to be reviewed on in September by the committee with the intention of reaching commercial rent. That's exactly what yeah. you want, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. And that will help Alison because that tells her exactly what her review dates are and how yeah. much is going up on those dates. And those are and so before VAT. The exclusive VAT. Oh, yeah, I've got VAT. Yeah, I've got yeah. plus VAT. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm happy to... <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to second that, that chair. Are we happy to approve? <laughs> Thank you. And as I said, none of that's um, not appreciative of the work that the Quarry Cafe does mm -hmm. in our town. No, so. yeah. Thank you very much. Right, item 14 additional bike stands at East Courts. Uh, we are asked to consider a proposal before us, which would mean the loss of two parking spaces at East Court. But I think I'm just going to ask the clerk just to confirm exactly what this committee is responsible for doing and maybe what the Environment and uh, Stable Travel Committee would be. Uh, yeah, in a nutshell, doing. Chair, quite straightforward. Um, the um, Environmental and Sustainable Travel Committee wish to um, place some better um, uh, bicycle storage here at East Court um, because it is um, going to be effectively it, it's a net loss of one space it'll be releasing two parking spaces because we've jiggled it around a little bit it will be a net overall loss of only one parking space um, but if you but in order to put a, a new cycle storage mm -hmm. in there which is more secure which is um, uh, better um, better for the bikes <laughs> Want to pay a better phrase? Um, then um, to the court, and it's under it's under a light as well. So yeah, so so convenient. so all that you're being asked to do is to is to agree that you are happy for another um, local bike stand um, provision to be put in on East Court, um, roughly where the, um, the 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 map shows in the papers, and um, you are releasing the two parking spaces or 
you know, net one as a result of that. That's all you're being asked to decide. It will then go back to the Environmental and Sustainable Transport Committee for them to determine the design, to determine um, exactly what they're spending, and they will be paying for it. So that none of that comes through this committee at all. It all comes through Steve's budget in his committee. Um, the only thing I would ask the this committee to be mindful of is that we are a conservation area and obviously the house is listed so whatever the design is I would suggest that the committee need to ask that that be borne in mind which it will be because I suspect you're going to be planning permission anyway because it's a conservation area but uh, all you're interested in is the the fact of the matter. It's an ancient looking bike rack Okay. Um, thank you for that clarification, Town Clerk. Has anyone got any comments? Hey, Councillor Gibbs. On the design, though, it's probably quite handy that the chair of planning is the chair. Thank you. I suppose my only question would just be about demand, just sort of, but is that something that the Environment and Sustainable Travel Committee would, um, would consider? And I suspect the chairman would say that um, if you build them in the right place and they've got the right facilities, it will make it much easier to, to, to build the demand. You've just answered your own question there, Chair. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, have, uh, Oh, just, just sort of what we've done with the old, will that prompt by the park? It will so stay. It will stay. So it's not, I thought, oh, we're just it's moving. An addition. There was talk about moving. Oh, no, there wasn't talk about moving it. <laughs> I, I got confused. There was something in this paper that said about potentially moving the cover, it, but, the cover but it's damaged. So but the rest would stay as is. is that the right? intention okay, is, to, is to add prov additional provision and um, better storage, I think. Councillor Odie can explain much more than I can about the type of storage he's talking about. <laughs> all, no, all it is is a, a, a Sheffield stands, the U stand. So it, it's uh, with, with, there are other designs that we've got put through to the estates manager. But um, yeah, it's using those two very narrow spaces that are on the corner there, under the light, closer to the building. It's it'd be a great um, setting of intention, really. Yeah. One thing I will say, it will fine. stop the, thank you Chair, it will stop them, the bikes going in front of the mansion house and things like that, which we always, uh, can cause problems when there's events and weddings and things yes. like that, if people are right, so it will stop that and it's close enough to the building. I would like to see it with a cover or anything like that, because I think it would detract from the whole thing. The um, deputy clerk has found um, some very nice looking um, bicycle storage in between planters, yeah. which might be something to look at. Well, got to be in I would like to see if it's going to be that, I don't particularly have an objection, but since we've got one already, I would like to see in keeping of what we've got. I understand the lights, I understand that and the security of that. I understand it's good because it's near the building, but on top of the building, you know, for people that are yeah. visiting, um, but I'd like to see it in keeping. And town clock, can we make sure these comments when it goes to the ENST e that just some of the, the flavour of those comments comes through? I'm quite sure that uh, the, the deputy clerk will include the uh, the recommended well, the, 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 yes, the, the resolution of this committee. Thank you. <laughs> and I know some people get upset that there isn't always enough always enough parking at East Court, but equally we're on a journey as a town to um, we are on a journey, yes. travel, and this will be a good step. In, in helping well, one of the so, reasons that people don't cycle more is because there's not enough certain cycle yeah. storage in the right spaces and, and, and stuff that doesn't you know really bikes. thank you Cass, Cass. sorry and again i'll just look at how many bike racks are we expecting storage bike how many bikes will it hold probably about 12 okay. potentially I we'll wait till yeah. critical so, mass. So one, one cool. space with 12 cycles, so there we go. So people can cycle on to drive. Exactly. So if you take yeah. all the car park spaces out, yeah. that's the pond, then imagine how many bicycles. <laughs> <laughs>
we'll all be I'll let you do the math. We'll have to do it in the county. So, um, okay, uh, I'm happy to propose that recommendation. If I could have a second, please. Thank you, Catherine. Can we show those in favour, please? Thank you. Um, item 15, winter maintenance. And I believe, well, we are just asked to note this report, but I think one of the points as we enter the cold weather is just wanted to highlight uh, sort of publicly for residents and sort of bring attention to what the sort of winter maintenance programme is. Do you uh, want to speak to that? Um, I, well, I was very mindful that not everybody on this committee um, has necessarily um, been with the council for a number of years. And um, I just wanted to remind everybody as we're going into the inclement weather, um, what we do, what we don't do, <laughs> what county do, um, and that uh, we can't provide a grin bit, a grin, a, a grit bin, grin bin, a grit bin, um, uh, just because we've got a few snakes, there's a few flakes of snow, that's just not possible. And uh, we certainly can't get round to um, fill them up again either. I mean, so it's just very want to be aware that the end of October, all grit bins that we have in the town, the 67, were sitting at 75% full. That's as full as West Sussex will fill them. That's it. And um, and that you really don't need to use, use very much. Um, as soon as we get some bad weather, they will empty because that's what happens. And uh, we can't necessarily run around to get them filled up straight away. But we, we do our best. And we what we're doing is supplementary. It's discretionary. We're not, we're not the highways authority. West Sussex are. They can't do everything. We do a bit to help. And that's really just to bring it to everyone's attention. Thank you. Any comments or questions? Just one. Just the map really hard to tell the day exactly are. So if we could just have to remember as an actual address, I'll just have a look. It's not my map. Can you help? <laughs> mine, mine is very minor for me. Is there, is there not a list? I thought we had a. I, I, I appreciate we've got the map, but if we not have a complete list with the name of the street next to it, I don't think we ever do that on that. So, a point, a couple of leaves. I want people to know that there's plenty about. Mm. What you don't want is anybody just driving well, I mean, somewhere to actually fill it up. It's supposed to be because it has. This council has determined the area that it's in is required. So yes, I can. I, unfortunately, to, it's, it's literally been put on um, parish online. It's just done as a. It's, so you've got on our website. To it find was the it. link at the in the, the papers. Yeah. So, so yeah, and I think right, that's. Just what we can do yes. for you, councillor, uh, or for the committee, is, 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 is we provide you a list. Um, we if, provide all councillors a list that has got the list of the streets where you'll find it. Wasn't so much about me; it was about yeah. you know the, the town folk who may wish to entice. I can I assure think you, a lot of the they time, know where they are, and they want to get it. From the, yeah. They want to go to the next nearest one, and it just might be tricky to figure out what that is exactly. The ones the hills will know where they are because they all use them. I've got one, I know where exactly <laughs> where is, which is 50 yards. But Alison's point is then you're telling the person who just wants to drive around and empty them where they are. Yeah. Because we, we want it's, some it's, more. And, 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 and I need to assure you, Councillor, that your biggest complaint you're going to get is somebody turned up with a train and emptied it. Yeah. What are you going to do? Oh. And there's nothing you can let's do. Take, They're not locked. Right, let's just take it completely off then. <laughs> no, 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 and 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 the other the other point to make is, is it really is a difficult one and, and i'm and i'm very sympathetic to how cross the public get about this i really am um but that salt has been provided by west sussex county council to be used on any highway in west sussex county so if somebody from crawley down or somebody from turner's hill mm -hmm. has driven into east grinstead <laughs> and has helped themselves to some grit it's not for us to tell them they can't have it because they were using it on West Sussex Road. When they're putting it on their own driveway, different matter. Yeah. If they're driving across the county and going into Surrey, different matter. But I have no way of knowing where these people go. And we can't just assume that because somebody turned up with a trailer or a four by four and took a few sackfuls out of it, that they haven't been using it in one of the smaller farms or villages around where they don't provide grip bins. This council has been really good at providing, say, 67. And, you know, we, we, 
it's it it you know we spend we spend all year talking about this don't we because sorry, it is I'm it's too. such an issue yeah. we should I cons- well, I was just saying we should consider color coloring the salts yeah. so we know exactly where oh, it's going yeah. 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 so it's very nice color east christy green and blue um so my second probably more and i probably should have led with this do we have a, a a duty of care on the bit of road that we own that is gritted and have we got enough grit probably was my more important should have led with that we have a duty of care on east court on because the road on, on the drive lease court because we, we we own that and that that's what it said in the report um we we go and have a look at that it didn't say about duty of care but it says that, that that is what we concentrate on um so we make sure that we have gritted east court we make sure that we have cleared the um stay. but we also have to appreciate just because yes we have a duty of care but legally all we all we are required to do is not make it worse if you have snow if you have ice you drive and you walk to the conditions and if you slip over because you've slipped on ice you've slipped on ice if we've gone out and we've made it worse we are liable we are not liable for not clearing it so that again the, the lawness is really clear but people get very very excited about it and you'll find people say oh i can't go and clear that bit of pavement because if i do that and someone trips over i'm in trouble not at all only if you have made it worse because you've gone out with a kettle and you've and it's frozen then you've made it worse we don't do that (laughs) it's a really difficult area thank you but we have an apologies obviously we have grit we have we have enough for the coming winter that we i hope so based on historical research you know where the grit boxes are so we can go and get (laughs) (laughs) well we (laughs) we have enough to to partially refill all of the all of the um, bins once so if we get a really bad winter, no, we don't. We do have an agreement with West Sussex County that we can go and collect more from them if they have it spare, but we have to then hire our own truck to go and get it. But then that's the, so that's an agreement. It's 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 all very murky, but it, 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 and there's no 100% right, wrong answer with any of this, but I just wanted to make sure the committee were aware because I can assure you, as soon as it snows, our phones go ballistic, your phones go ballistic, and everyone's expecting us to suddenly appear like the shopkeeper and Mr. Ben in every corner with a sack of salt. It's just not possible. Yeah. Thank you for empowering me for those Exactly, yeah. Because otherwise you'll get a very frosty reception. With oh. <laughs> On that note, <laughs> so I think we've, <laughs> I think we've uh, led to that report. Thank you very much for that time. I'll break it to so the next full meeting of the committee is on Thursday the 14th of March, um, although we have a short meeting on Thursday the 11th of January uh, to discuss the committee's budget recommendations. Um, no other business for the meeting, so it being 8.52, I'm going to close the meeting. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Barry.